welcome to live from the Red Room at the Rose of Tralee. Of course, what are we going to talk about first? <laughs> Molly, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> the whole nation is stunned and people all over the world watching now live on the player. There's all the family in behind you. Oh my God. If people were living on Mars and they missed what just happened, uh, Kyle, what did you do? I just asked her to marry me. <laughs> did you expect this at all? No, sir. Not at all. <laughs> Not one bit. Oh, I'm, I'm still if shocked. She knows I'm, I'm horrible at surprises. So this, this caught her. <laughs> I like the way surprise. you decided to be discreet about this, Kyle. Not only is this a big deal already, but you decided to ask her to marry you on national and international television. Was that not a bit of a risk? Um, it was, you know, uh, me and her cousin and her dad were the three that knew about it beforehand. And we had a few concerns and everybody worked with us great and made it happen. Such an amazing moment for us. Um, and just, you know, I can't describe it right now what I'm feeling. My heart is going a thousand miles an hour. And Kyle, what was the biggest concern that she might say? Oh, I won't say it. <laughs> How did you two meet? How did you first meet Molly? Well, um, it was an interesting story that she told in Port Leash while she was up there. And um, I was at a fraternity rush party, um, and I fell off a mechanical bull, and I broke my toe. And I couldn't find anybody to drive into the hospital. And I just met her a, a few weeks before, and, and we had been talking. And I had to go, can you do me a favor and, and pick me up? You know, I need to get some crutches. And she picked me up. and. She took me home. About an hour later, I wasn't feeling any better. I called her back, and she took me to the hospital and then spent six hours with me, our first date at the hospital, and that's when I knew. And just to mention very quickly, because I know I've been told in my ear that everybody is talking about this on Twitter and Facebook, so hash oh my God, hashtag Rose of Tralee, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll read them out in a little while. You're crying. I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't stop. This is such a magical moment. Oh. Everyone. Soon to be newlyweds. Yay! Molly and Kyle, congratulations, guys, and the very best of luck. Well, what a way to open up live from the Red Room here. The first time we've ever tried this at the Rose of Tralee. Let's go over here now to one of the main men. And tweets coming in, we're going to get to them shortly. Henry Healy, how are you? Very well. You are normally escorting Barack Obama. Well, you did when he was here in Moneygall. And this is a bit different. Why did you go for the escort at this year's Rose of Tralee? Oh, look, the opportunity arose and um, I was at a selection night uh, for the Offaly Rose and uh, I was encouraged uh, to apply and I was only too delighted to do so and I don't regret it for one minute. It's been a phenomenal experience since we arrived. What has been your favourite part so far? Oh, look, actually, there on the screen behind us, just to remind everyone, there you are with your cousin, Barack Obama. Do you think he's watching tonight on the live stream? I believe he's tuned in. He is, he is. <laughs> you tweeted him or you text him, so he's watching. But which do you prefer, escorting a president or escorting a beautiful rose? Well, I have uh, the beautiful New Zealand rose, and it's uh, extremely easy to, to escort her. She, uh, it, She's at ease and she is enjoying it and uh, I'm only too delighted to be by her side. It's an honour for me to be there by her side. Mary, I can see there you've got a smile on your face that's as big as I don't know what. What did you think of what just happened? Oh my God, my heart just stopped, you know, because it's, it's just such a fantastic moment for this beautiful girl. Um, something she's going to remember for the rest of her life. And, uh, you know, I mean, happening here at the Rose of Tralee, fantastic. And if she wants a band for the wedding, you know, Crystal <laughs> Swing could well be available. <laughs> Crystal Swing are available, you heard it here. So, your highlight so far, was it the Rose Bowl? Because I know that's one of the big events. I heard some stories, it was a late night, is that true, Henry? Um, uh, maybe for some other people, but the Roses and the Escorts were tucked in early. But the highlight for me has been actually the parade on, on Saturday evening. I've walked down Fifth Avenue in New York, truly way, way better. Henry, in one word, are you looking maybe for your own Rose here? No. Uh, oh, well, well, sorry about that, girls. He's not <laughs> looking for a rose. You just disappointed everyone. OK, lots of tweets coming in. We're going to get to them very shortly. But uh, he did mention the Rose Parade. We were there on Saturday night. I got up into one of the floats with the New York Rose. This is like a dream come true. This might be the most exciting night of my life. You're from New York. You must have seen things like this in the Big Apple. You know, I've done the New York St. Patty's Day Parade, and it is really fabulous, but I don't think there's anything quite like Tralee. Is it a bit tough doing a parade like this when you have the big Rose Ball the night before and it's a late night? You would think, and I won't tell you what hour I finally got up to bed, but with the adrenaline from all the excitement, 
They're excited, so we're excited. It keeps us going. Some of the roses told me you hit the hay at around 7 a.m. this morning. What roses told you that? Lies, lies and blaspheme. I was in bed before three, I swear. Oh, I just want to take you anywhere to do it live. We could go out any day, any night. Maybe I'll take you there, take you there. Maybe I'll take you there. Now, what I really come over here to ask you about was the Rose Bowl last night, because I've heard a lot of rumors. Grind, why are you starting to shake here? Uh, no rumors for me now. It's uh, all about Kieran here, you know? I mean, he's a good-looking fella. Uh, it's pretty hard to keep the women away from him. Kieran, would you like to pick it up there? Um, no comments. Let's make a move. Yeah, so tell me, girl, if every time we touch, you get this guy. Might as well get in on the action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a great turnout here tonight and everyone's in great form. I feel so lucky to be sitting here tonight. I used to come to these parades when I was a young girl and I'm just so happy to be sitting here. Have you travelled on a float like this before? <laughs> I can't say I have, no. <laughs> it's a first and like in front with all the people waving. Look, you better wave at them. Hello. <laughs> I want to talk to you about the Rose Bowl last night because sure. I heard some rumours. Uh, Haley whispered a few things into my ear. Oh, Were really? gentlemen throughout the night? Well, that's for Haley to say and not me. Oh, come on, you can give us your version of events. Yeah, well, we're trained to be utter gentlemen at all time and I hope I'm living up to that. What time did you finish up at? Half past. Yeah, that was good fun. I found myself up in a float with the New York Rose. What better way do you spend your Saturday night? Dahi, are you used to this at this stage or what's the crack? Yeah, it's great fun, but to be honest, we knew what was coming down the line as well, going into the news, and it was just really, really exciting. It was good fun. We had a great start to the show with uh, Marie, <laughs> and uh, it, it, it was, it's, just, it's just great fun out there. Marie, uh, we, I was telling you earlier on and yesterday, saying when you go out there, there's just this wave of positivity coming at you, and it makes it really easy for everyone. Was it tough going first, Marie? No, it, honestly, I couldn't be happier about having gone first. Oh, he was brilliant. He was giving me a little pep talk, and it was fantastic. But it's it's very surreal. It's it doesn't feel like it's over at all. It was so quick. It only felt like about thirty seconds, and I'm just so emotional for Molly. It couldn't have happened to a nicer person. I'm absolutely thrilled. Now. Dahi, I have to ask you because everyone on Twitter is talking about the beard. Uh, somebody on Facebook thinks you look like Tommy Tiernan. Discuss. Loads of people are saying that. See, I turned up at the launch last Tuesday in Dublin Airport, apparently in the same three-piece suit that Tommy Tiernan wears. So obviously people think I'm as old as Tommy Tiernan, but I'm a good ten years younger than him. I think. You wouldn't tell, wouldn't you not? No, that's what people are saying on Twitter. Another fellow looking for my job. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. You should take it off with a chainsaw. The beard, that is, not the head. <laughs> Well, I'm sure there's easier ways of getting it off than a chain. So, do you know, I, when, I, when I had it first, people were saying, get rid of it, get rid of it. But I think it's growing on people, if, if you'll excuse the, the pun. Okay. It's definitely growing on me. But it, it's a bit, it was a bit of fun as well. And it's not too warm. I was afraid it was going to be warm. That was my main concern, because it gets really warm on stage. But it, it wasn't, and it's OK, yeah. I've never ha had a magical beard like that. I've always taken it off. So does it make does it heat you up a lot? Was that a big worry for you? Uh, it does, especially, I suppose I had a Grizzly Adams beard a few weeks ago, so I, I trimmed it down for the Rose of Tralee. So I was still undecided, really. I thought I might take it off during the week. And then it just, there was people saying they liked it, and so I, I kept it. Now, from beards to wellies, what was that all about? The wellies and the little framed photograph? <laughs> Well, it was just so funny the way it worked out because I didn't think I was going to be put with an escort that was a farmer and he obviously didn't think he was going to be matched with an Irish girl, so it just worked out very, very funny. But um, hopefully it seemed to get a good laugh, so I hope it was a bit of entertainment for people at home anyway. It was certainly entertainment for us for the last two days. So. Well, you did brilliantly, and I know I'm biased because I'm from Clare as well, but yeah. well done. Fair play to you. <laughs> Those old Clare crowd, they always stick together. Hey, Dahi, Dahi has been cut from tomorrow's live from the Red Room show. Can we just uh, take note of that? Uh, well, if you have been watching the Rose of Tralee over the last few years, you know there have been some memorable events, that's fair enough to say. But do you remember this? Performing a hip-hop dance, our Dublin Rose, Shabelle Nick Hothig. Really? And here she is. 
Hello, how are you? What do you think when you see that bit of tape? Oh my God, I don't know. I just kind of get a flashback to what it was like at the time, but I was just so oblivious to what it could be like. Do you know that kind of way? When I saw you do that, I thought, one, she is a brave girl. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. broke the mould a bit, didn't you? Well, it wasn't my intention. Do you know, as all the roses will know, when you go out into the stage in the Rose Tree, you are told from day one that you have to just be yourself, be yourself. And I just figured, well, I can't Irish dance. I don't know any poems. And this is what I do with my friends to have a laugh. So that's what we've done. Was that a dance routine you had rehearsed and rehearsed, or was that organic? No, never. You see, when you're going for the Dublin Rose, it's kind of like Keith's, well, there was in 2011. So I had done it maybe three or four times, rehearsed it earlier in that day, and then went out on the stage after one rehearsal and just broke it down. <laughs> and broke it down, just broke like that. Down. And do people recognise you? Do you get sick of people coming up to you saying, oh, you're the girl who lost the plot on stage at the Rose of Chile? It depends where you are. Like, after we had done the dance, yeah, it did happen a little bit. And there were some people that had opinions about it, but then there were other people who just absolutely loved it, you know, that kind of way. So it was nice. It's nice to be remembered. How many hits on YouTube did you get? I think it's about 538,000 at the moment. Wow, nearly as much as Crystal Swing standing over there, who we're going to hear from in a while. But um, actually, mentioning Crystal Swing, I made a new friend earlier, actually. There, just met Derek there. Derek is smiling. Would we like to see Derek try a bit of the dance, everybody? Yes, they're looking at me smiling. Uh, will you do the party rock anthem dance? I'll teach him like a few seconds if you want. Okay, Derek. Yeah, we'll do a trade off. You teach me the party rocker, and I'll teach you the hucklebuck. I'm going to get oh, hurt okay. here, so I think I might Let's go really out, good. let them do hucklebuck. The Meets party rock anthem. Oh, give it up for <laughs> Tarek and Chabelle. We need more women like this in Ireland that can do that, I think, Colin. I do you agree? I agree. What do you think, guys? Yeah? I don't think people appreciate how hard it is to do your dance in heels, either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Seriously. I don't have six inches very underneath hard. me. Do you think you did a good job? You did a great job. You're a great crack, Derek. Thanks very much. It's all a bit of crack, well. a bit of fun, exactly. Of that's it. And uh, of course, if you saw that and you're thinking, is this a bad dream or what is this? You can watch this all back in the RT player shortly after we go off air tonight. I think we should bring in the Garda band. Come on in, drink in your... No, this isn't planned. So they're saying, what the tea. is going on here? Uh, is that to your coffee? Tea. It's bad looking tea. Yeah, it is actually. I'm just all right. Is it okay? Yeah, How, yeah. Is your, how's your tea doing? It's not too bad. I threw a whiskey in, so it's okay. Okay, so you're doing okay. <laughs> Purely messy. Is that the secret to your sound? Something special in the teas and the coffees? For me personally, it actually works, yeah. <laughs> it works. Yeah. You guys not only perform at this, this is what I see you on television every year, but you do some of the festivals as well, don't you? Yeah, festivals around Ballina and um, around the country. Travel everywhere. Mm. Sam Festival as all well. All over the country, yeah. Basically all yeah. over the country. And you enjoy it under Pat Kenny. Yeah. I know he made the joke. He went to Newstalk yeah. and he's back now looking after the band. Yeah, it's yeah. part of the job. It's not difficult when you're working with all these roses, I presume. No, it certainly helps. <laughs> do you go to the Rose Disco, by the way, that's on in the Dome afterwards? Well, we don't, oh, we don't in particular. The younger fellas, yeah. The younger fellas? Yeah, yeah, we're the older guys. I think I've got a feeling I'm going to see these guys later on tonight <laughs> doing a dance that we just saw there. What do you think? I think so. I anyway, hashtag Rose of Chile. Are you on Twitter, by the way, guys? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Okay. Fair enough. You told me. Uh, let me see here. A uh, Gaza on YouTube. Hi, Gaza. He says, you are smoking hot. Is that me? Everyone's shaking their heads saying, no, not you. Uh, Shabelle, I think someone called you smoking hot on YouTube. Uh, um, I'll take that. Thanks. She'll take it. Okay. We have another one here. We'll just throw that out there to Neve. Uh, the dub says, Derek is David Brent. Will you take that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> so Smoking Hot and David Brent. Okay, we're on to a winner here. We'll get a few more in. What else have we got? Uh, no, that's one of my cue cards. Uh, lots of tweets coming in saying, that was so sweet, the two that uh, got engaged. I was crying, and I'm a guy. Guys can cry too. <laughs> Guys can cry too. Well, let's... Side. Everyone has a sensitive side. Uh, just to remind you, if you've wondered what you've stumbled across, this is live from the Red Room. It's the first time ever we've done this at the Rose of Tralee. So while we're waiting for the main show to come back on RT1 with Dahi, we're just kind of kicking back and having fun here in the Red Room. Dervla. Hi, Colm. How are you? 
I'm good, how are you? I'm absolutely great. I'm having a great time here in the Red Room. Um, we're absolutely delighted to be here and all the gorgeous roses. And, and of course, a while ago now was the crowning glory when that gorgeous rose got proposed to. So it's a brilliant atmosphere here. Did your heart melt? My heart did melt because she seemed like a very genuine person and, and um, her boyfriend seems really nice as well. And they just seem like a really happy couple and I wish them all the best. It's a very brave thing to do on live television, up on stage. I mean, anything could have happened. Yeah, I mean, he's extremely brave to have done it. Now, he seems like a really nice guy, so I can see why she did say yes. But um, can you imagine if she said no? <laughs> That's the thing. <sighs> well, that would have been a viral hit on YouTube. Yes, yeah, certainly. We would have gotten a lot of hits, so it would have been good from that point of view. But speaking of romance, my heart was broken a little bit when I heard that you had a boyfriend. Oh, I'm sorry, Colm. I'm very sorry, but I do have a boyfriend. How long have you had this boyfriend? Um, well, we're going on, you could say, two years now. So um, he's, his name's Tim, and uh, he's, he's an absolutely brilliant boyfriend, I have to say, and we get along so well, and he's very supportive, and I suppose kind of, you know, in the job that we're in, being away at the weekends and travelling around, there's never any problem. He's totally laid back. He's fitted into the family so well and um, I'm, I'm so happy. Yeah, that's what I have to ask you because Mary is the boss, we all know that, so what does yes. Mary think of Tim? She loves Tim, um, she, she thinks he's a really nice guy and she's always praising him and I think that's a good thing as well. My family like him, I like his family and I hope his family like me as well and um, I think that we're, we're quite a, a compatible couple, we get on very well. The funny thing is that Tim has never been on television, I've heard you talk about him on radio before and I've read about him but I've never seen him no, um, I suppose Tim is, he's quite shy, you know, my, he's kind of like my dad, I suppose my dad kind of shies away from the camera a little bit, which is not a bad thing either, and, um, but saying that he's always there as well for me, so he might make a reveal sooner than people think. Would we like to meet the boyfriend, Tim? Yes. Tim is quite shy, he's quite nervous, but I think he's coming in now. Tim, come on in, take a seat on the couch, I'll move over a bit. Now. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Who picked that? Right now, someone has been fired for putting that in. Uh, Tim, how are you? I'm very good, Cullum. Thanks, sir. I never got a reaction like that before. I might get used to the limelight. A nice uh, artificial trumpet does the job, doesn't it? it nothing does. like it. Uh, uh, nothing uh, awkward about this, sitting with lots of roses looking at you. Um, this is your first public appearance with Dervla. Yeah, exactly. I usually keep, try to keep a low profile, leave the... TV appearances to the professionals like and I just uh, stay at home and keep out of the way. You're a busy man because you came up for rehearsals today and we were sitting here but you were in the mart this morning. Yeah there was no rest for the farmers who have to work seven days a week but uh, I was in the mart this morning and just came straight to here then straight away after so busy, busy lifestyle alright. And I asked you, buying or selling? And you said, always selling, Colm, always selling. <laughs> always trying to make a few bob, all right. <laughs> and you had a big truck full of money when you came up here, so it obviously went well this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, it did very well, all right. Uh, could just try to get everyone there to buy a bit of lamb and uh, keep the prices <laughs> up. <laughs> now, since we are talking about love, love is definitely in the air. Uh, it's just us chatting here on a couch, nice and relaxed. So I want you to spill the beans and tell me all about Dervla, when you first met her, and what was it you really loved about her? Uh, well, to be honest, it was kind of, I was very friendly with Derek for a good few years and got to know Dervla then, kind of slowly but surely, and we started chatting away and met out a few nights, and eventually I booked up the courage to ask her out, and she said, yes, thank God, and went out. How did you do it? How did you ask her out? Set the scene. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well, we were kind of texting away, and I just, uh, once, one night I said I'd go for it and I just asked her we go to the cinema there some night and she said yes and went up and picked her up and dropped her home and and it's and been all happy ever since yeah. and you're building a house at the moment and when I talked to you about it earlier you said yeah we're starting with the roof and I said how does that work how do you start with the roof and work down some magical house uh, no we start the roof has started though since last week so it's coming along nicely so we're planning on settling down and there you know, once we cast a bit but we we'll get there in the end and uh, You'll get there. Well, we're going to be joined by, uh, I think the Johnny Galrose is coming in to say hi. The more the merrier here in the Red Room, that's what we say. Hello. Uh, Catherine, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Have you been up or are you going up next? I have been up already. And what was it like? Is it a thing that you're very nervous about beforehand? Um, you are a little nervous, but I think it's good to be a wee bit nervous. And once you get out and you're on stage for the time, just flies then. 
And where are you from up in Donegal? I'm from a village called Rafo, so it's kind of in between Letterkenny and Bally Buffet. Yeah. Okay, is this something you've always wanted to do, the roles of Tralee? Ah, yeah. Um, this, I think I can speak for all the 31 girls. This is something I've always wanted to do all my life. And um, this year, my housemates said at the start of the year, right, this is the year that you're going to do it. And we were kind of out having a few drinks, and I said, OK, OK, this is the year. And the next morning, I woke up to the application form at the bottom of my bed. So I had no choice then but to complete it and send it in, and here I am. I love that. We were out having a few drinks and then we decided, because as we all know, no good story started with a salad. Uh, finally, Tim, we saw the proposal on stage tonight. Uh, maybe tomorrow night during the Red Room live show, are we going to see anything like that? I think uh, one proposal maybe is enough for tonight, but uh, maybe down the line, maybe next year. <laughs> maybe next year. Well, I better let you get over there, Dervla. You are playing us off the air and I'm going to get over here and say goodbye. I can't believe half an hour has flown by that quickly. Time really flies when you're having fun. We'll be back with you again between nine and half nine tomorrow night here live and exclusively worldwide on the RTE player. And forgot to mention, we're also streaming live on YouTube. So make sure you put it on Twitter, Facebook and everything else like that. Thanks to Henry Healy, to Crystal Swing and to all our guests. Don't forget, keep tweeting hashtag Rose of Tralee. Dahi will be back in the dome in a few minutes with the next part of the show. We will talk to you tomorrow, nine o'clock live from the Red Room. Crystal Swing, everybody. Let's hear everybody sing. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands, are oh, you looking good? I'm gonna sing my song, it won't take long. We're gonna do the twist and it goes like this, hey! Come on, let's twist again, like we did last summer. Yeah, let's twist again, like we did last year. Do you remember when things were really buzzing? Yeah, let's twist again. Twist the time is here. Here we go, round and around, up and down we we'll go again. Baby, don't you know I love you so? And then come on, let's twist again, like we did last summer. Yeah, let's twist again. Twist the time is here. Hey. Come on, let's twist again. Twist the time is here. Let's hear on the hand. One more.